Well, hey, beautiful people, and welcome back to another episode of Faith and Friends. I'm your host, your sister in Christ, and your friend, Georgia Brown. And I am so grateful that you're here for another fun-filled, faith-filled conversation. This past week, we talked with our friend Michael as we went through Matthew 6 in our prayer series of talking about Give Us This Day our daily bread. So if you weren't able to join us, I would definitely go back and listen to that incredible anointed conversation. But today we are continuing in the model prayer, what we have been calling, you know, the Lord's prayer of this truly outline of how Jesus kind of tells us how we should be praying. And today we are talking with our friend, Laura Osnes, as we talk about forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Verse 12 of Matthew. This conversation is a sweet one. I love Laura so much. Her story is all for God's glory. And she's been through fire, but guess what? She has come out of this truly shining. Diamonds are made under pressure. And Laura is a pure diamond, all for God's glory. And oh, I just love her so much. And this conversation was a sweet one. So I truly pray that it blesses you and meets you right where you're at. All right, let's dive right in. Laura Osnes. My girl, my friend, my sister in the Lord. Hi. Hi, Georgia. I'm so honored to be here. Thanks for having me, girl. Oh my gosh. Of course. I'm so grateful for you. And my goodness gracious, you are a singer and actress and you're known for so many beautiful roles and, you know, as wife and as daughter of the King, but most known for Cinderella, you know, we just <laughs> love her. We love her. Exactly. And now you're here in Tennessee and you kind of came here on a very interesting journey, not an easy mm -hmm. one. The road less traveled for sure, as that poem talks about. And right. And as I just, we sat for coffee and I was like, Laura, I'd love to have you on Faith and Friends. Girl, we're talking about prayer, all the things. And we just talked about what conversation would you like to step into? What do you feel the Lord leaning you to? And I said, I have this one called Forgive Us as We Forgive Those, you know, in Matthew 6. And you were like, that's it. That's the one. Yeah. That's it. Totally. Um, forgiveness is not an easy topic to talk about. And when you, you said, you said the other option was like something about prayer and uh, provision, yeah. I think, and then forgiveness. And I just felt this like zing in my heart that was like, I think you need to talk about forgiveness because it's something I've had to really learn. I'm in the process. I'm learning that forgiveness is a process. It's mm -hmm. not like a one and done prayer and great moved on forgive others as you forgive as God forgives us great like easy peasy no it doesn't really work that way um so I'm excited to get to talk about that and share my journey and my heart along the way of uh forgiving others yeah absolutely because everyone's journey is going to look different I mean but I'm just grateful to hear your heart behind what the Lord has brought you through because that is how we come to really know him more and more is through our testimony. And it's just so yeah. beautiful, although it's not always easy. And yep. it sometimes takes us through the valley of the shadow of death, but I will fear no evil for thou art with me truly. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm going to say a little like backstory, but then I want you to take me, take me there. So you were sure. in New York, you were in Broadway doing all the things, living your life. I mean, up until this point, like that was your life. Like yes. theater, this is what you've been wanting. This was the dream. This was the goal. Um, but sometimes dreams and goals shift as the Lord has to prune us. And in the process, it's kind of prickly. It hurts like a little cactus of getting poked. And, yeah. and it, you know, it's like, ouch, like those old cartoons. Yes. And you kind of didn't leave by like your own will. It, it really was the Lord kind of pushed you out of the door. So tell me about some of that. Yes. So good. So I spent 14 years in New York city, um, acting, singing, dancing. I had a very blessed career getting to check a lot of dream roles off my list on Broadway. I did six Broadway shows. Um, and COVID essentially when the, you know, whole pandemic happened, the industry was very shut down and New York city got hit very hard. And I think fear gripped a lot of people, um, anxiety, worry, uh, hopelessness uh, was kind of reigning in that city for a long time. And rightly so, it it really did hit the city hard. Um, 
my husband and I ended up kind of escaping to Connecticut for the majority of that quarantine time. And just kind of as the city was beginning to come back, um, vaccine mandates were being put into place. And I'll just be honest and say that I had to back out of a couple jobs at the time. My husband and I decided to just hold off a little bit on the vaccine. And I had to back off of a couple jobs that were beginning to mandate. And somehow, um, the New York Post found out and decided to make it very public and ver basically broadcast my vaccination status saying that I was fired for refusing to get vaccinated. And there were several mischaracterizations within that article about how the events went down. And it very much kind of attacked my character and um, said that I was <laughs> like, wanting my castmates to get sick and putting people in danger. We hadn't even started rehearsals yet. Again, it was my choice to kind of back out. Anyway, I was it it led to kind of a firestorm of mm. media um, hatred. And I felt like I was very kind of publicly canceled. Mm. And made and I felt like it wasn't safe for us to stay in New York anymore. A lot of the majority of the community either distanced themselves from me or turned completely. And we moved down to Tennessee for a fresh start and a safe, soft place to land. And we have absolutely loved it here. It has been so welcoming, but everything that I knew, and as you alluded to earlier, I had put my identity in, mm. came crashing down. And I didn't know who I was without that. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I have always been a person of faith, but this felt like Lord, what in the world are you doing? This is so painful. This is more than just a cactus prick. This is like mm. my world, like shattering is what it felt like. And at first you're just trying to pick up the pieces, right? And then I realized that like that wasn't actually the plan to pick up the pieces mm. and try to move forward as we knew it. It was like, oh no, the pieces are shattered. And God's like, I have something completely different and new for you. Yeah. But when that's all I've ever known, I had no idea what this new season was going to look like. And talk about forgiveness. Again, it felt like, and I, I don't, I'm just tangenting here, but it's mm -hmm. like, I, I felt wronged in yeah. so many ways. Um, just because I never made a statement about anything. I was like, I have the right to choose what I feel I need to do to my body for my body right now. Um, but that was not the accepted narrative and way of thinking in New York City and especially within the entertainment industry. Um, and so it felt very good to hold on to that bitterness for mm -hmm. a while because I think if you heal too quickly, then it means like it was it wasn't it didn't hurt that bad. Yeah. Um, like I'm good. And, I'm good. Yeah, it's okay. I I it's okay. I love everybody. I'm gonna forgive everybody. And I was like that it just was not easy for for me to do that and I started kind of pouring my emotions into songwriting and I used a lot of that pain and a lot of um some of the betrayal that I felt and um released an EP like six months ago and I will be honest and say one of the songs is called bitter <laughs> so come on girl um, I was like you know what this is where I am right now and so I'm writing my truth and that song actually started as as a song called grateful and the mm -hmm. verses was this were the same and then the chorus became but i'm taking these hurtful things and i'm choosing to be grateful in the midst of it like i'm like this is the message i want to put out into the world um i want to try to be salt i want to try to be light i want to try to set a good example but i left the session going like that's just not where i am yet and we wow. had a rewrite on the session and decided to just write the truth Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of healing came from being able to write that song. And I go, bitterness is real. Hurt is real. Pain is real. And as believers, it's okay to feel those things. Yeah. However, we need to channel them in mm -hmm. the right way. We are called to love others. So how, when, when we are wronged, do we treat the people who have done us wrong? Um, and I think I felt for a while, I was like, okay, I'm not going to be outwardly hateful, but I'm not ready to love you yet. So I just need to also distance myself <laughs> while I work on myself and while I work on my heart yeah. for a bit, until I'm ready to forgive a little bit more.
<laughs> right. It is a process. I love what you said about like this vase or this, you know, this bowl, whatever it is, like your little flower pot that you've been planted in for so long. And then it just falls out from under you and you want to pick up these pieces. And what comes to mind, Laura, is like, you're trying to pick them up, but it's like broken glass to where you get cut in the process of you're trying oh. to mend something that was never meant to be picked up again. That sure. the Lord's like, come on, it's time for a new season. I don't want this to hurt you anymore. Look over here. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. Let me give you rest. Let me be the one. Because truly during a time that was, first of all, so confusing and crazy. And there was so much noise for yeah. then for the enemy through the use of media where you didn't even speak up. I mean, you were just being quick to listen and slow to speak. And you were like, I got to do what's best for me and my family. The enemy comes in like a flood, but the spirit of the Lord raises a standard. And man, yeah. you were like publicly, um, like truly for better or worse words, like humiliated. And like, I can't imagine how that felt when you're just trying to love, love as Christ <laughs> has loved you. Um, and so how did that, how did that feel when you, did you feel like you had to fight for your words at first? Did you mm -hmm. want to like vindicate yourself and, you know, vengeance, but I know the Lord says vengeance is mine says the Lord, but we're so quick to be like, wait, 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 let me tell you my side of the story because sometimes we get that, but sometimes we don't. I know a really good question. Uh, yes, I did feel like that at first. And I think, I think because the article had several kind of untruths and felt like it was written in such a way to purposely at attack and mischaracterize me after you're right. I felt like I was called to be a missionary in New York, essentially, yeah. and just love on people in the industry for 14 years. And that in this moment, my reputation meant nothing, mm -hmm. that all of that was overturned in a moment because of this one decision that I was choosing to make. Um, I actually did craft a response to the New York Post and posted it on my Instagram like five days later. And I went through so many drafts of it and prayed over it like crazy. And obviously I knew I wasn't gonna change people's minds. I knew that wasn't my job. Um, no matter what you say, I'm like, we're allowed to think differently. Like that needs to be okay. Like we can agree to disagree, but yeah. is where's where's the respect or the... Um, the allotment for a freedom, a freedom of of choice here. And yeah. I felt like that was something I actually had to stand up for. And I felt called to stand up for, which was really interesting because I feel like God was like, yes, vengeance will be mine. Mm -hmm. However, when given an opportunity to be strong and courageous, Come are you going to just fade into the background and hope it blows over and try not to ruffle feathers and hope people forget? Mm. Or are you going to go, actually, I need, I'm, I think I'm being called to stand here in the face of adversity and have a backbone and develop a fortitude. <laughs> and that was really hard. Uh -huh. I felt like, you know, I'm a fish swimming upstream and wrote a song about that as well. Um, <laughs> and so I, there's a balance, right? And I think at the end of the day, it's about listening to the Lord and acting in obedience in whatever he's calling you to do. And there's a time for everything. There's a time to stand back and be quiet. And there's a time to stand up and stand firm. Mm. And um, I'm not perfect at that, but that has always been my goal is to seek his will first and try to act in obedience. And we've been, man, it's been a rocky journey of trying to navigate that the last year and a half, but yeah. forgiveness is a, a huge part of that, that I felt called to do. For sure. Girl, you're out here quoting Ecclesiastes. There's a time for everything. And I just, I girl, I just love you. And then by sta saying, standing up, like I think about those <laughs> Hebrew boys that were like, we're not going to bow down. Just if everybody else is, I don't care if it's just me and my two homeboys, like we're going to stand firm. And right. man, like, okay, when it comes to forgiveness, some of these people that you had been doing life with, I think sometimes I think, oh, everybody's my friend. Like we're all friends. But then when like, you know, rubber hits the road and things yes. get a little rocky. Um, and some true colors are revealed and a heart posture is revealed of like, are you going to stick closer to me than a brother? Today's verse of the day was Proverbs 18, 24, where it talked about, you know, a true friend versus a friend that's just sometimes mm. there, a true friend sticks closer than a brother, even through adversity and all that. And so 
what was that like that people that you thought, oh my gosh, I thought we were going to be in each other's <laughs> lives forever. How have you gone about maybe, like you said, taking a season to say, let me work on myself and like yeah. be able to forgive you in my heart? Because there's a difference, like you said, between just <laughs> saying, oh, I'm good with my mouth and then truly letting that penetrate your heart as well. Oh, for sure. It was, I mean, it was very hard hurtful. And I hadn't gone through anything like that before. I've been, praise the Lord, fairly like well-liked in my life. I haven't had to deal with a a lot of um, uh, hatred or public hatred. And it was, it was very surprising to me, very hurtful. And of course, I think like things had to get that bad for me to be like, I need to leave for God to be like, wait, I have something else for you. I'm sorry that this is going to be so painful, but this, this drastic thing is going to have to happen. I think to uproot me from New York, Mm -hmm. I was, I thought I was a lifer. I thought this was my calling forever. And like, I don't know if I would have considered moving or doing something else had this not happened the way that it did. Um, I think what I had to learn was that my healing And the hurt that I felt couldn't be contingent upon the wrong, upon them wanting forgiveness or apologizing. And (laughs) Mm -hmm. it it feels really good. You're like, you, you want, you want everybody to apologize or at least acknowledge. Like you owe me this. Yes, exactly. And you don't always get that. And Mm -hmm. I realized that by holding on to that and wanting that, only prevented my own healing process and holding on to bitterness only feels good for a season. And then you realize it seeps into every other area of your life. And that's not the human that I wanted to be and that I was called to be. Um, I mentioned this before we started rolling, but I started reading this book by Lisa Turkhurst. It's called Forgiving What You Can't Forget. And if anyone is has been through a season of feeling like they've been wronged, or hurt or betrayed this book is phenomenal I'm actually I'm only halfway through and I've tried I've underlined I'm highlighting things I've written journal entries about things it's very very powerful and I feel like I'm just kind of pulling some quotes from you know that book as well but acknowledging the vulnerability to say I'm also imperfect and what God did he did for me just as much as the person who wronged me. And I need forgiveness just as much as that person who was created in God's image and whom God loves equally. And so if God can forgive me, the best reflection of the Lord is to forgive that other person. And even that was God's dying words was like, forgive them for they know not what they do. Like, yes. Oh my goodness. And what, what a reflection to, even when that person doesn't want forgiveness, even if that person hasn't apologized to still be like, in my heart, I am choosing to forgive. And it is a process. It's a decision and it's a process. And so I think now it's been a year and a half, Georgia, since all that happened. And I feel like I'm still in the process, Um, but now I can talk about it. And now I at least have some words around uh, some of the things yeah, knowing that it doesn't happen overnight, I think is half the battle. Absolutely. I'm okay. so glad that you brought up the verse, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. Because I was going to bring that up because seriously, I think about the cross. I mean, it goes both ways. His arms were stretched wide. And so we need to forgive those around us, but it also is vertical. Think about the things that he has forgiven you from. I mean, we all fall short of the glory of the Lord. And we really have to remember that very often. Like I'm reading Old Testament, Laura, and he's always having to remind the people, I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of Egypt. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. And I always am highlighting it because he's having to literally tell him every few verses. It seems like this is who I am. Don't you remember like who I am to you? And so when you remember who he is to you, you can really extend that love to others because you don't have to love for love. We love from love because we were loved first as it talks about in first John four. And so man, forgiveness is just a part of it. And something else that I would love for you to speak on Laura is 
forgiveness doesn't always mean, like the book says, forgetting, but forgiveness also doesn't look like maybe bringing them back into your close three of like your Peter, James, and John. Right. So what does that look like? And just like having kind of some new healthy boundaries. Wow. That's really good. I think I've learned, I've had to learn that as well. Um, Cause initially it was just, uh, yeah, you, that that's exactly well said. I don't even know how to better say it, but it's knowing that those people don't have to be your best friends again. However, they don't have to be your enemies. Come on. That's good. <laughs> oh, so it's like for a while it felt like enemies, but then you're like, wait, forgiveness through that process. You can at least, uh, you don't have to love what they did, but you do still have to love the person. We are still called to love and be kind. And that Lisa talks about that too, in this book where it's like, they're, you don't have to hate the person because of what they did. Cause God still loves the person, but you can hate what happened yeah. and, and how it went down and what someone did to hurt you. Um, but that's really interesting. It's, and then finding new people. I feel like God has brought yeah. a new community into our lives here in Tennessee. And we needed it. I mean, in a moment mm. we were like, I feel like we lost our entire, and World. it wasn't our entire community. I mean, it's easy for me to say that in a, in a, you know, generalization, but some of those people of all things a year later have come back or have apologized in a way, or at least I have been able to have some deep conversations and hopefully show love and compassion or talk through some of the hurt and pain. Yeah. And I think like, Having gone through that process on the other side of hurt and pain is someone who has a new sense of empathy, of compassion, of humility, of strength, of fortitude. And then I realized like what God did in me by having to go through that. And that's where I go, oh, it's worth it to learn how to forgive. And wow. character is being built <laughs> in yes. the midst of that process. And um, that's actually a really beautiful thing to see as well. Wow. That it is beautiful. And for you to be on this other side, it's still a process every day for like sure. One foot in front of the other, but for you to say, God, like I trust you even in the heartache yeah. and in the hurt. Um, man, I mean, that just shows where your heart is in, in your own growth. So that's beautiful. I think half the balance too, is just being willing to forget. Ah. There was a season where I wasn't, I wasn't willing. I didn't want to. And I think all God asks us to do is bring a willingness to forgive. And then it's like trusting him mm. to do the rest because <laughs> yeah. we can't, we can't do anything in our own human power. No. We can't do anything like it's, it's not up to us, but I think the willingness of being able to acknowledge and want to want to forgive is um, a big first step. Um, I had a verse in Ephesians as well that mm. I wanted to bring up. Um, it's Ephesians 4.32. It says, instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. And Colossians as well, uh, 3.13, it says, make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Mm. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. It's like he continues <laughs> to remind us of this. Yes. And as, as good as bitterness feels, we are called to be tenderhearted. We are called to make room for each other's faults. I am not perfect. We are called to forgive those who offend, pray for your enemies. That happened a lot too, praying mm. for those people who I felt wronged me. Um, and the Lord, the Lord really does. He works Yeah. and time heals. And, um, it's cool to look back now and be like, that was really hard, but I learned a lot by having yeah. to go through that. And I'm still growing a lot from having to go through that. What did it look like to pray for those who hurt you? Cause that's something we're called to do. What did it feel like at first? Was it kind of foreign to be like, Lord? Yes, it was very foreign. The good thing, the thing that I did uh, find comfort in is that it, it felt like that was the only thing I could do. Wow. I knew I couldn't talk to them. I knew I wasn't going to convince anyone. I knew I wasn't going to persuade anyone. I knew like, uh, so I, the f one thing I felt I could do was talk to the Lord about them <laughs> mm. and pray for them and pray for their heart. Um, 
Cause I knew I was like, I may never talk to that person again on this earth, right? <laughs> but I don't want to be holding animosity or hatred and unforgiveness and bitterness toward that person forever. Yeah. That's only, that's not good. That's it keeps not you good. captive. It really For does. Sure. And, and Matthew 18 talks about this and, and I love it because forgiveness is truly Laura, the gift you give yourself, because like you were just saying how people have come back and wanted to have these conversations, wanted to ask for, um, just forgiveness or even just stepping into a new season with you and whatever it may be, forgiveness is the gift you give yourself. And so if you wouldn't have allowed yourself to be willing to step into the healing with the Lord, you might have not been in a place to be able to receive and sit in those conversations. So glory to God, like to the friend listening that is having a hard time forgiving. (sighs) Like this is the gift you give yourself. And this is what scripture says about forgiveness. And it's so wild. Like we need, I really want to read the whole thing, but y'all can read it. It's Matthew 18, (laughs) 21 through 35. But really um, verse 22 says, I do not say to you up to seven times about forgiveness. Peter was asking, oh, should I forgive seven times? And Jesus said, no. Thinking that was generous. Thinking like seven times, right? That's, that's a lot. That's a lot. Like seven whole times. And Jesus said, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. And between verses 22 and 23, Laura, I think the crowd or whoever was there besides Peter and all them, they were probably like, what does that mean? (laughs) I I literally can just see them being like, okay, math is hard. 70 times seven. So I could just see them having this glaze. And so then the Lord goes into, um, Jesus goes into verse 23 saying, Okay, let me just tell you a story here. For the king, for this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wishes to be settled his accounts with his slaves. So then they're like, oh, here's story time with Jesus. Y'all gather around. Right. We're about to have a lesson, you know? And so basically he goes on to say that there was a, a slave who had a huge debt. And in the Passion Translation, it says a billion dollars. In the New mm. American 